Okay, good evening. How far is work? Welcome. Most common flags coming down. We won't sound the horn. Thank you. The comfort of those attending here. Before we get started with these two fine, handsome gentlemen, uh, I'm just going to remind you next week. We are not doing a seminar. We're doing a uh, more of a hands-on seminar with uh, another Jaguar and wine tasting. Uh, it is Pinot Noir. Bring a bottle and uh, a dish to share and two dollars, and it's a great time. Uh, how many people went uh, last month? And they are all have smiles on their faces. It was uh, is that good and lasting. Um, the following week we'll resume the seminars and we will present. Uh, Rick Diola and Don Radcliffe, Radcliffe excuse me, will be speaking on the predicted log race, which is kind of a, a fun but complex sometimes race. There's Don. Uh, and then uh, following that, uh, Bo Vrolik will be talking about his new schooner, Mayan, which has a long and fascinating history, as well as uh, the complete overall rebuild he's doing on it. It's a pretty neat project. Uh, check out his blog if you're on the, on the interwebs. Um, so tonight we have uh, Fred Bullnar and Chris Hoffman talking about how to get involved in the race committee. So let's give them a nice uh, welcome. Thank you. Hopefully I don't need a microphone. Is just loud enough for everyone? Yeah. Sure. Great. Chris and I just took a class on race management a couple weeks ago and uh, we both have a little bit of experience on, as a PRO. So we both worked on uh, race committee for several years, and we're going to be bouncing back and forth uh, during this talk. It's, uh, as you can tell, welcome to the race committee team and what happens um, onward. Barbara has a, a booklet on uh, the race committee team. Join the race committee team, and we're going to be loosely following this. Um, very important in the back, flags and signals. So hopefully you can keep that. So if you want to learn how to run the races and be on the race committee team, come on out and join us. If you already know some of the, I see a lot of people here that have some experience on the race committee, please come out and join us. You'll have a good time. It's really helped me with my racing, and I enjoy watching even better racers start uh, See Morgan Larson pull off some of his stunts. <laughs> Over on that counter there, we have sign-up sheets uh, both for helping with the race committee and also Matthew would like to do a couple open houses on Onward, which is our signal boat, and he'll be happy to take you on a tour of Onward and run you through the various procedures we, we have and show you how Onward works. Race committee goal is to have a fair fun, and safe time on the race course. We want it to be fun, both on the race committee and for the sailors. And questions are welcome anytime during the presentation, so feel free. So well before race day, the powers of be meet and agree on a date and a format for the race. Some of the bigger regattas, like um, the Melchus Worlds, the 505 Worlds, they might uh, be three years in advance they start planning. So reserve the date, um, get I don't know how many people to agree, and then start filling in the blanks. So the head people are assigned, which is the, the principal race officer. You need to arrange for the various boats and equipment. Uh, write and send instructions, and then as a team, and then assign the various jobs. Yeah. So um, uh, this, this is about um, what happens the day of the race, and uh, uh, it, the, it, if you're involved in kind of the, uh, as the PRO or helping to set up, it's good to have lots of checklists. There are checklists down and onward, there's uh, folders that uh, you can kind of tap into a lot of experience from the club over the years, so it's good to go through those checklists. Do things like make sure that you, you know what the weather's going to do for that day, so you're prepared for the kind of conditions we might encounter. Make sure you got fuel on all the boats. Um, the sailing instructions are done. You've got all the marks. Um, you can ruin a day of racing 
for a whole bunch of people if you don't have all the flags that you're going to need during the day. Um, so just making sure that you you got all you know gone through all the check check marks. Um, most of the time, we'll supply things like lunches and water, sodas, um, so you don't need to worry about that, that too much. Um, then, um, uh, getting a general idea of like how you're gonna, you know, what what assignments uh, need to be filled and kind of sign up for that. On page 31 of the handbook is a, is a good list uh, for like individuals and like what. What you should bring, uh, stuff like warm, warm clothing, follow the gear, hat and a visor. Uh, there's also a, a, a little section there about personal conduct, and uh, uh, it mentions uh, that it's good for the race committee to have one voice uh, in all the communications to the, or, or as few voices as possible in all the communications to the racers. Uh, and the first one that comes up is the skippers meeting. Uh, uh, there's a couple of rules that come into play at the skippers meeting uh, that the whole race committee should kind of be aware of. Um, one is rule 41 is this rule about outside um, and you need to be very careful in that you're not using any of the racers by giving them special information that, 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 that no other, uh, the, the other racers don't, don't have access to. So there's a very specific rule, and it's, um, it's good to kind of read through that just so you understand that. And that's, that goes to this idea of like, uh, you know, also having like one channel of communication. Every, everything should try and go through the PRO. Um, the other kind of interesting rule is if you are the PRO or, um, or you do get involved in conversations or questions that come from the racers, um, it's very important that if there's any changes to the sailing instructions or the rules that you're going to run the regatta by, they they can't just be verbal instructions at the skippers meeting. They have to be in writing and posted for all the racers to see. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind. And like if questions come up, you should also, as much as possible, refer the racers back to. Um, uh, to either the sailing instructions or the rule book and try and answer most of the questions that way so that you, you don't create any kind of confusion. Um, so that kind of covers, you know, lead, you know, getting everybody together, make sure you got everything ready to go, and then have the skippers meeting and then get ready. So now let's talk about the various jobs that need to be filled. On land, for many of the larger jobs, there's all kinds of support needed. Uh, we had almost 200 lasers here for the Laser North Americans, and there were people doing the registration, doing the check-in, launching the boats, moving the dollies. Um, we probably had close to 15 people, at least, working on the shore. Um, the whaler and other support boats, especially for the smaller Smaller boats out there, like the 505s and the, the lasers, you need the many support boats, we'll call them safety boats. The whaler is oftentimes the mark setter and the, and the mark puller, so they're pretty busy, and that's probably the hardest job, hardest physical job out there on race committee. And also the whaler and possibly other support boats will need a recorder in case there, there is a shortened course. And they also are recording as boats go around the mark so we know that all the boats that started and went around the weather mark. And all the mark, boats that went around the weather mark went around the reach mark. We want to keep track of all the boats during the race. Then on onward, many of these jobs are shared. I like to have at least five, six is probably ideal. Eight gets to be a bit many people on onward. But uh, someone to drive other than the principal race officer. I can drive, but driving is stressful when the principal race officer is stressful. <laughs> And I'd rather not do them both. So I, I'd like to have a, a, de a dedicated driver on board. The recorder is recording the finishes, making notations. Wind reader, they're recording the wind. The, the early part where you want to find out if the wind is oscillating or if it's a permanent shift, so you, that affects how you set the start time. 
radio operator is usually the principal race officer with a backup in case the, the PRO is busy. But you really want one voice and you want to be very careful what you do say on the radio. I would like to announce that it is my intention to start the race in about two minutes. I don't say we're starting in two minutes because somebody's going to sit there and watch. <laughs> Okay. Um, yeah. So the, those first six jobs are kind of they're they're kind of coordinating to like get the boat into place, uh, uh, get get the line set up, see what the wind's doing, and kind of like managing getting the race off and running. And then the signaler, the sounder, and the timer. Those are um, those are kind of more mechanical jobs, but they're very important jobs to make sure you get off on a good start. And so the signaler is the um, um, person who's going to be raising the flags. And that's a pretty easy job. You get out there, and uh, you, can, you can, you know, we've got all the flags kind of laid out in different places on the boat. And you can, um, you know, the first, first, first task uh, to get, like, get involved is, like, just learn which of the flags you're going to be raising and kind of what the sequence is. And it's, it's good to have, like, on the back of Fred's uh, notebook and like plastered all over onward. Uh, there's you know reminders about what the sequence of the flags can be. And that job is very important because the visual signals count. The sound signals are not quite as important, um, but it's to the second when the flag goes up, that is the signal. Right. And it's not easy when it's windy. <laughs> um, and, and then there's the sounder. Um, so the, the, the signaler, like, I think the, the, the race handbook says uh, you know, the good qualities for the signaler is to have three arms. Um, the sounder is, um, is just blows the horn, right? And, uh, and then the, the timer is the guy that coordinates all this. And John Menzel is, is like the club's best timer because he's got his commanding he, he goes through the sequence and he's giving instructions to everybody as they're um, as we get ready to go to start through the sequence. So, like he'll say, you know, thirty seconds to warning flag up, and the class flags need to go up at that time, and kind of gets everyone on attention and gets everyone focused, and and then kind of lets the whole crew like we're starting in the sequence to like keep the keep the conversations to a minimum. And it, let's get focused so we can get the boats started. And then, like ten, you know, fifteen seconds before the start, we'll just another reminder. You know, fifteen class flags up, and uh, so you can make sure that like every in position, got the horns ready to go, and uh, and uh, is kind of gets this cadence going of uh, building momentum towards the start. Uh, absolutely. The clock we use on Onward is over there on the counter. If you look underneath it, there's some blue tape. And if I am the timer, what I like to write on the blue tape is time of the warning signal, time of the start. It's right by the clock. You can't miss it. <laughs> that is the standard. And other people can copy that onto their, their finishing. And then the score is, um, is, is keeping track of their kind of surveying the situation as well, kind of watching for boats that potentially are over early, ready to record those numbers or any, you know, anything that's going on in the race course. So, um, all right, so you guys are having way, way too easy. <laughs> way too easy. <laughs> yeah. Couple of questions. Yeah, I was going to ask you what the difference between the score and the recorder was, but that's okay. Um, <laughs> the score takes care of the stuff when we come ashore and assigns the scores. Um, but they could be one and the same person. Yeah, because my experience as PRO is you never depend on one recorder. Right. Yes, you have right. two people two or three. Right. writing down the same information, and then if somebody gets dyslexic, you're, you're in better shape. And the other question was on the on this whole timer business. You know, we're now 15 and model boats, and it's all recorded. And there is. His beautiful what to do when <laughs> is all recorded. And somebody pushes one button, yeah, yeah. and then for the next five minutes, 
Put me out of the room. Yeah. 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 Is it five minutes or three minutes? What? Is it five minutes or three minutes? Well, actually, it's nice. one or two, but okay. but it's but it doesn't matter. I mean, you. Right. Well, for the dinghies, the they, technology is there. Yeah. To, yeah. They do that in dinghy starts, and also we do that in team racing. It's an ollie box. You yeah. push a button, it does a 10 second countdown, and it goes into a three minute sequence. There's no flags. So, I don't think you could really do that on a bigger fleet, though. Why not? Because the the vision time is time. Time well, is time. Yeah. I mean, it's. It, uh, I, I think it's a great way to automate as much as you can, but then you're also relying on that automated system. Um, to, to get the start off as well. Um, when you have a 700 yard line, <laughs> some boats are not going to be able to hear that. Well, the but if you want to use that system, it's it's in the rule book. It's appendix right. S. Right. It can be done. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. yes, well, our experience is you get a fleet with a lot of boats at the finish line. It's the, the recorder is the most important part. You have two or three recorders. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. And sometimes you have the whaler step station at the other end of the line. Yeah. It'll be one big boat. I won't mention names. Big giant boat and the deep fleet that will come across. <laughs> the <laughs> and a big shadow. And obscure the whole thing. <laughs> right. And you have someone, part of the recording is you might have someone on the Next boat with a camera. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes five boats will finish within 10 seconds. My introduction to something like that order. was one of the first times I was PRO for Midwinters. All the boats piled up at the leeward mark, transition, easterly, somebody could sail out of the easterly, and the finish line looked like a start line. <clears throat> there, there, there were that many boats at the finish line. Overlap, spinnakers up, you couldn't read sail numbers. It was six boats finished within five seconds. And there was a mess, and actually the competitors sorted out because we could not camera. really tell. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, the camera wouldn't have helped either unless it was airborne. Because of, of all the overlaps. So that's where the way would have someone to run the line. Quad cop. Or a drone. He needs a drone. He needs a crew shot club drone. I'm just saying. I just can't. I got swimming on this episode. I'm kidding. You've got to get a drone. Anymore green. So where are we going to get? Tell me so much you can do. So what happens on the water? On the way to the race course, the RC flag goes up. We don't have an issue here, but. In some areas, the harbors are pretty crowded, and we want the racers to know which is the race committee boat. Close to the start time, I like to do it about five minutes ahead of time. You raise the orange flag, which marks one end of the start line. Boats are being checked in. I have a copy of the check-in sheet that I like up on the clothing display up there. You can check that out. Um, somebody's doing wind readings and trying to determine the, the course. You set the start line. You want it square to win, but in Santa Cruz, everybody likes to go right, so you might favor the left end of the line and try to spread yeah. the boats out. <laughs> and you shoot for one and a half times the aggregate boat length. If the wind's lighter, you can go shorter. Um, I think sometimes in team racing, it's what about one and a half times the aggregate boat width. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, you want to give the boats enough room to maneuver and uh, keep down the falls and give them a nice fair start. You want to set the mark square to win so the uh, boats will try to have the, the same amount of time on both tacks. And uh, obviously there could be wind shifts, but uh, that is the goal. Communicators, you want to keep the communication to a minimum. There's sometimes I may want to get information to the competitors, but I don't want to tell the competitors, so I'll make a radio call to the whaler. If the competitors are listening, oh well. <laughs> Phonetic alphabet, I think that is very important. Um, hearing on the radio is not so good, and N sure sounds like M to me. So entirely different flags, so I like to say November, or Mike, or Lima, or Papa, or you name it. And also, if you do want to talk to somebody, you can help. Hail them with the come within hail flag, the legal flag. <laughs> and I already said uh, about the approximate intentions. It is my intention to start at approximately or something to that effect. So, so, so now, you know, we got all the boats kind of in the area. Uh, they're all checked in and kind of they've got everybody assigned their duties and they kind of know. And so then that, now we're starting into the sequence here. 
And like I mentioned, uh, you know, it's good to have a, um, the timer kind of control the cadence of, of what's going on and, uh, and kind of get, get the race going. The other thing that like you, you want to try and do as the PRO and the whole race committee is like build, build some confidence in the fleet that like you know what you're doing. So trying to get that first start off right when the sailing instructions say, sailing instructions say you know, 12, 12.55, you want that horn to go off right at 12.55 and uh, first warning signal. Um, and, uh, and so, so this is the sequence that we use. Um, go through five minute starts for most of the races here. Uh, like for instance, team racing has a different set of rules where like we have an ollie box and it's automated and it does cycles through three minute starts. Uh, but for most of the races here, it's five minutes. Um, so before five minutes, um, uh, or before the warning signal, you wanna make sure that you put the course flag up so that the racers know they can start planning their strategy for the race. Um, and, uh, and then right at that five minutes warning, uh, the class flags go up. So that's an indication to the racers um, which, which classes are gonna go off for that first start. Um, and there's one sound that goes along with that. Um, Fred mentioned that it's the, it's the flags, the vision that is, um, is uh, controlling the race. The, the sounds are a, a kind of aids to the racers so that you know, if you don't get your head turned around or if you don't, you know, you're blocked out, you know, they're assistance to the racers. Um, and the, this first sound is pretty important because that's when the racers are setting their watches. So um, you, know, um, it's, it, you want to make sure that like, that first sound, you've tested in advance, you know, maybe at the dock or on the way out. But make sure that like that first sound um, gets on, because uh, then the racers will, you know, they have their watches set. They'll be in sequence with you, um, and then so at four minutes, you know, the class flags stay up, but then the uh, preparatory flag uh, uh, comes up, and then with one minute before the start, the, the preparatory flag. This is the P flag. Um, uh, yeah, up and down, and then at the start, the class flag comes down, um, and then uh, that is kind of a mad scramble on the committee boat just to make sure that you know find out if there's any any boats over early, and then figure out what to do with that situation. Um, so the line sider looks down the line. One of the uh, there's, it's interesting, to, you start getting into this, and there's the sailing rules that kind of govern the race, and you, you know, you want to follow, follow those pretty closely, and then there's kind of, um, uh, kind of common conventions and things that really help the racers, and then there's uh, 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 things that, uh, and just common courtesy things, you know, that you, you, you might expect could help the racers. Um, and one of the conventions is, uh, is to call all clear on the radio. It's kind of you know, been done for a long time, but that's kind of been frowned on now. Uh, there's probably some, uh, some appeal or some, someone misheard you know, um, uh, all clear on the radio and they thought they were over earlier and they protested the committee. And so now the, the rules don't specifically say, don't say all clear, but it's becoming the convention to, to not, uh, not, not send that signal to the boats over the radio or, um, uh, and so uh, the line sider looks down the line. If it, you, know, you can communicate within the race committee team to say, like, looks like there, let them go. Um, or if you've got a couple of boats over the line, identify the sale numbers then you, it's the individual recall it's the X flag that goes up uh, x-ray um, and so you have this flag standing by if uh, if the, if the, uh, the line spotter says like I got I got the boats I've got the sale numbers um, 
and then the PRO will say, okay, uh, individual recall. Uh, the X flag goes up, and then you then you start to hail the sail members of the boat. The uh, what says so in the sailing instructions. That is not required, but it right. says so in the sailing instructions. Right. It's it's the response to the, in the, the general rule is the responsibility of the boat of the boats to start correctly, mm -hmm. and. Um, the, the race committee can get involved in a few ways. One is to hail the numbers of the boats that they see over the line. That helps them to get back on the line site. And the other uh, convention that's fallen out of favor, it used to be that you dip the flag when you saw the boat return to the starting, on the right side of the starting line. But that's no longer uh, recommended as a practice to do. You have to make a sound too when the flag goes up. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, one sound. Can we put that? No, wait. X-ray flag up and one sound, okay. and the, and that, that flag stays up until um, until all of the racers that were over early have, have gone to the um, to, to the proper start and re restart it, um, or if at four minutes. So there's, there's actually a situation there that could create a lot of confusion. It's like if a racer's coming back and they just they're hitting that four minute mark but they have it all the way cleared and they see the flag go down, um, they might they might be very confused. But the, the instructions are very clear that like get the flag down after four minutes and like if everybody has it crossed, it's still their responsibility to get back on the right side of the line and restart. So I was uh, helping with race committee on one race where Determined the boats that were over early by the boats that were not over early. There were two boats that were not over early. The rest of the fleet, those lasers, was over early. So they put up the individual recall. And those two boats that were not over early, they went on the race. And all the other boats were supposed to come back. Not all of them did. <laughs> um, and, and so the other the other remedy that you have for a bunch of boats being over, and if you can't see all the all of the uh, all the sail numbers is to call a general recall. And uh, the, the, it's the first substitute is the flag for to signal a general recall to the, to two the horns. racers. Uh, two horns go up. You want, you want to try and avoid general recall if you can, because it's a penalty to the boats that started correctly. You start to, you start to get set in. Like the boats can be very aggressive on the line, or they can you know, get punched up. Or they're not returning to the start. Just a lot, of, a lot of bad things happen when you go to general recall, or you go to these penalty situations where um, you, you can you can penalize boats, but, but they also have side effects that, that don't create the right incentives for people that start correct. And one sound when this goes down, and when this goes down, you're one minute away from the sequence. Yeah. So you, you want to you want to make sure that you're ready to start this restart the sequence when you're when you, you, know, you can lower that um, uh, general recall flag at any time. Um, so you want to you want before you lower it, you want to say like, are we are we ready to go back through the start sequence again? Is everybody in the right positions? And, yeah. yeah, I've raced up on the bay a lot, and you get into a general recall situation, the salient instructions say. That fleet goes to the back of the pack. Mm -hmm. The rule Which, book does not, but if it's it in the sailing instructions, I, I think right, that's yeah. a really good idea. And, and, and it does discourage false starts. There, there is a way around <laughs> yeah. that. If you put up the general recall and then postpone, then you can send that fleet to the back if it's not in the sailing instructions. Yeah. But that's a good idea to put it in the sailing instructions. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And the, the, other, the other thing to note here is. You can go from an individual recall to a general recall, uh, but not the other way, right? So, um, so first, uh, you know, you know, kind of check out how many boats you've got. If there's like, kind of get, get most of the racers who started correctly, let them go by the ones. And like, if it's just too confusing, if there's too many sale numbers to call out, yeah, for, for most cases, um, that you want to try and you know, get the right reinforced. How many general recalls have we had over the last few years? One or two per season? 
It really depends on the regatta. Very seldom in our one design or our, our score racing. I've mostly seen them in the big aggressive fleets, the 505s, the lasers, the you know, when it's the North Americans or some, some big fleet where you might have 30, 40 boats on the line. And, and I mean, most of the middle cannot see the ends of the line. They're, they're just pushing and pushing because they don't want to get buried. But on, on the one that I was talking about, uh, where there were two boats that, that started correctly. I think we had four general recalls that day. That was the last resort. It wasn't, normally you wouldn't do that on the first one. It's not that you had that many boats over, but you're trying to send, what you're trying to do is send the right signals to the racers to say like, you know, if you guys don't start correctly and there are boats that are doing good correctly, like they're gonna, they're, they're gonna, they're gonna do well. I flagged the other Yeah, I flagged the the, the problems with, with, with the penalties, well, there's one penalty where anybody who is on the course side um, of the race, uh, of the race course, um, they, they need to go around the ends and restart. Uh, and that's the eye flag. And, but the thing that, that put up the eye flag, all of the racers are gonna bunch up on either end of the line because if they are get forced over early, they're right in position to restart. So like you got this big gap in the middle of the line, so you're 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 creating you know more problems for the racers to get. Up. You're not use, you're not able to use the full line, um, and then you get to the black flag, which means anybody over the line is out of the race. Uh, and if they go over the line twice, I've, I've seen the black flag on my job. Money right. more PCC. So you, you know you, the people come here to do racing; they don't come here to to get thrown out at the start. Um, so that's a pretty severe penalty, but like if that's the only option that you have, you got to use that tool to send the right message. Yeah. yeah. Does the X-ray flag go up if, if things start? No. Yeah. Okay, so if you don't see an X-ray flag, you know you're... Yeah, the most good. important thing is if you don't hear another horn, it's a clean so if you, it's Again, it's the visual signal. So, so if you don't, you hear, don't hear another horn, <laughs> right. and they think they are recalling individuals, they're wrong. You can protest the race committee. You need two horns. Yeah. <laughs> Postpone is the race committee's best friend. Good idea to have two on the boat in case one goes over. <laughs> we generally have one on the halyard ready to hoist and one on the pole if we can't get to the halyard quick enough. But uh, some of the reasons you might want to postpone if the race committee is not ready, if the race committee has made an error, you can postpone right up until the start. If there's not enough wind, that's usually the reason I use the postpone here. If there's a significant wind shift during the starting sequence and you need to move marks, if the start mark comes adrift, that's never If competitors are unavoidably absent from the starting area, I've seen that because if there's no wind, they're bobbing in the harbor mouth. You wait for them to come out. I've also had some traffic concerns where multiple fleets are on the course, you're in sequence, and you see a fleet coming down to the finish for B fleet. <laughs> That's a good time to postpone. Right? <laughs> then there was the time the fishing boat became disabled and anchored in the middle of the start line. That didn't require a postpone, but boat showed up. <laughs> Had we been in sequence then, that would have been a postpone. Uh, and uh, uh, one score rate. Come through the start line. <laughs> and, and we had uh, that the, the Stagnero whale watching boat follow the whale through the start line. <laughs> and so it might be. So, well, let's, 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 let's wait a few minutes. Uh, the, the other thing, also, it's like going back to this idea of like you really want to be in with the racing and what, what they're trying to accomplish. So, so Brent mentioned like not enough wind is a good, good for most fleets. In most cases, is a um, 
it's a good time to um, postpone the race. Um, Matthew and I ran into a situation last year on the double angle where it's a, you know, it's more of a offshore ocean race and they've got, there's also a fleet down in Monterey that's racing to Moss Landing as well. And so they really want both fleets to start at the same time and it's an ocean race. So, you know, you have to deal, you're going to deal with, you know, times when there's no wind uh, across the course probably as well. So, um, that's a case where like the fleet got really upset with Matthew and I because we put up a postponed flag. Well, like, we could see the westerly filling in and it was like, you know, five minutes away and we said like, let's hold off for five minutes, but we kind of, they wanted to get off right at the same time so that they could, um, yeah. you know, be starting at the same time. Well, ocean races are supposed to start on time regardless. Right. So, so that's where like checking with the fleet to kind of get a sense of what they want to do before Safe problems out on the course. Some of the classes actually have in their rules that no races will be started under a certain limit. Right. I'm sure the final class yeah. has that. I know the lasers have that. Yeah. Yeah. It's just the opposite for the lasers. It's like if you don't have five, it's not a fair race. Um, and and so they have a much different uh, different idea. So like getting in tune with those conventions and 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 in some cases rules, you know, class rules uh, is important. So they do not postpone. If, for instance, you're in the sequence and for some reason the, the horn doesn't go off, as long as the visual signals are there, continue with the race. Right. Yeah, and this is the one that I was talking about before as well. It's like if 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 you don't get that first horn, like you're 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 depending on all of the race boats to be watching for when the flag goes up uh, for the for the first warning sign to go up, and then. Like nobody's always watching your boat. <laughs> the race. So you're going to get the case where um, no one's going to have that right, and you know you just might want to postpone on the warning signal. If you get into the count, like everybody's got their watch set, um, like if you, if the horn doesn't work, like you can, you know, it, 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 you're still going to get off of. You know, fair start with everyone having the ability to get their watch set. But that first horn is now. If, for instance, the flag comes up on time, but the sound is ten seconds late, that's a mistake. Postpone. Yeah. If there are two sounds and there should be one, that's a mistake. Postpone. If there's no sound, it states specifically in the rules, absence of a sound signal is not. Yeah. Or shall be disregarded. I think. Yeah. And when somebody's out whale watching, but they should be racing. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to wait for them. And most women flash out is two horns, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, you don't have to check the cheat sheet. No, it's just the one. Adults? No. I don't think it's one. Looks like two. You're right. I think it has been last time. Two when it goes out, one when it comes down. And that's like like Fred says, it's the you know, it's it's the race committee's best friend. It's like the exit for, for anything goes wrong, like just postpone and least, and get you know start over from there. You can do over a start, you can't do over a finish. That'll be in a later slash. <laughs> um, okay, so during during so now you know we've got all the boats, they're off on the race course. Um, uh, make sure you know how many boats got off the start line, uh, especially around here. Um, you know, you really want to keep track of all the boats all the time um, uh, because of the possible safety issues and you know the uh, You want to keep track of the fleet, uh, so like count the number of boats that are going off with each start. Make sure that you're logging that so you can kind of. Keep, keep a running tally of what's going on on the race course. And then um, once you've done that, it's a little chance to, like, it's been a pretty stressful situation. You know, you know, make sure you got the flags and make sure you got those start line square and, like, lots of little details of all kind of come together. And it's a good, good time to take a little breather. And, um, uh, and but, you know, have, have lunch. Uh, but keep somebody kind of monitoring what's happening with the wind. Make sure they're, you know, 
if there's any boats that uh, need assistance. Um, and then you're going to be watching for, you know, situations that might lead you to, like, raise some more flags and, uh, you know, change, change the race. Um, if, if, there's, if, there's, if there's something that's happened that makes the race unfair, um, uh, you know, you can, if there's errors in the start sequence, if there's foul weather, if the wind completely dies and you're dealing with a fleet that they don't, you know, they don't want to race with no wind. Um, if there's some problems with the that you, that you can't resolve, uh, or if there's, uh, you know, safety issues that come into play, those are all good reasons to, um, to, to abandon the race. And uh, so it's the November flag plus three sounds, um, and, uh, and that, that's the indication to all the racers that, like, this race is done. And you can also abandon before the race. Right. For instance, put it up in the harbor if conditions are such that we're not racing that day. Hmm. Question. Do you distinguish between abandoning that race or all races for the day? Yeah. And how that sequence of flags, I don't know if it's in this book, but it's in the racing rules. That Abandon pretty much means for the day. If you want to postpone, there's, uh, you can postpone, which allows you to finish the current race, but postpone future races. Yeah. There's different combinations of flags for that. So, so got your race go. So N with three signals means the uh, abandoned. N over H is all races are abandoned, further signals ashore. Mm -hmm. yeah. And N over A means um, all races are abandoned, no ra more racing for today. So if there are three races scheduled and you abandon the first race with just the N flag, then you show a starting area for race number two and number three. Um, the second kind of condition is like um, they, um, you know, you got the weather mark set up and everything was looking fine, and all of a sudden current got a hold of it, or the, uh, and it, um, the the procedure there is to get the um, you know whaler or, or or boat and go to the position where the mark was or or should be and put up the mic flag. And then signal repetitive sounds that like, you know, here I am, I'm the new mark. Um, if there's if there's time for this uh, for the whaler to get over and like grab the mark, the new position, you know, to to, to the position where it should be. That's that's the best condition because then you don't have the racers trying to figure out well is it the drifting thing or is it this part over here? Uh, if you can get those two together, you can make sure that like everyone knows. Um, so if you have a racer that gets around a, a stationary mark and then the mark leaves town, do you do you make uh, kind of accommodations for the rest of the racers in that part of that fleet, or you is it just kind of the uh, how that, racing goes? That's that is probably closer to the abandoned condition, you would where like it, there's like material, uh, you know. Unfairness. About fairness of the okay. race. I, I was in a race where the lead boat snagged the mark and dragged it. <laughs> so everyone else had a shorter course. Very clever. <laughs> <laughs> they did not abandon that race. There were some stories at the bar. So the, so the next one is shortened course. And that's used... Um, I, I've been trying to use that more on the score races when we get to the, you know... 3.30 or 4 in the afternoon, and the wind dies. Um, to try and let's get everyone back to the bar is like a priority for me. <laughs> um, uh, it, it also has some issues about fairness. You know, people are expecting to race up a certain course, and like they planned out all their tactics, and when you shorten it, like you're changing the rules of the game. So it, I think you've got to be careful with it, but it goes back to what, what are the expectations of the racers. Um, and uh, generally, yeah, I really like shorten the. Fred, like Fred told me that like the San Cruz Yacht Club is really uh, it's a it's 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 a drinking club with a sailing problem. So <laughs> really getting people back to the bar is an important aspect. And, and the wind dies. Nothing to do with that. Nah, it's, 
chance, you know, there's a possibility like it's not going to fill in until the you know, sun goes down and it's 10 o'clock. So like they could sit out there all night. It, uh, short and course is the only thing I've ever done that's never generated any complaints. <laughs> <laughs> um, the other option that mostly gets used like in the big, uh, in the in the bigger national regattas, where you've got big, big fleets, um, is to change course. And the procedure for that is you go to the to, to the to the mark that the fleet is about to round, and you position the uh, the signal boat to uh, to put up the Charlie flag, and then re, uh, and then uh, sounds, and then you also you know depending on where you're changing the the, the mark, um, there are some signals you can put up to lengthen the course or to change the uh, to change the magnetic bearing to the, to the mark. Um, and the repetitive sounds are for each group of boats. You want everybody to know that you are making a change. It's not just for the lead boat. When you shorten, that's just for the first boat. Two horns for the, the first boat. And everybody else should know that that is a shortened course. Do you have a question? So the, um, we're talking about the signal boat here, which in our case is onward. When are these uh, flags yeah. flown over uh, the mark boat or the safety boat or... Or, the, um, most of the time, we'd be talking about whaler. Whaler, whaler. whaler would fly. Or, or, or if we, you know, if, like in the in the cases where we shortened course on score, like we just took, you know, there were there were no more boats in finish our finish area, so we just like went to a different mark to finish everybody. Okay. Now during the midwinters, where the start line is required on the second weather leg, that has been shortened from the signal boat. Okay, so because generally that, that line is required, so they just put up the S flag yeah. instead of twice around. It's, it's once around. So the mark set boat's going to fly this flag because it's visible to the to the fleet. Well, and and movable. And yeah. and would onward also post the same flag no. or no? No. 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 Okay. You you create some confusion. Got it. So you're saying that you really only need to make the sound for the first boat. No, for, the, for the short, yes. Yeah, for the short. Yes. I think I think I think each boat. Is, I think the rules actually is a huge boat. Which is because, yeah, we've done it before, and the first boat could have finished so far on a hit dance, and the next boat doesn't really pay good enough attention. So we usually like give the sound continually as every boat in that fleet. That, that is a courtesy, it's not required. Oh, okay. <laughs> I think it's usually obvious it, when you see the signal boat next to the mark. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And I'm giving my opinion and my message, which is sometimes incorrect, so feel free to break the rule. Okay, yeah. The, um, the rule is 32 3, and that gives the instructions about what the sequence is for short course. Um, and it says that if the race committee signals a short course, the flight that displays the S flag with two sounds, finishing lines, uh, and then it's. It, um, says how you're supposed to set up the line. Um, and then it says the shortened course shall be signaled before the first boat crosses the line. And that's all it says. So so I think it is like that's another thing where it's common courtesy to like give two blasts when and like that's what I, that's what we that's what I've done. Yeah. Uh, got three so but it's not in the rules. That's another you know it's another one of those kind of gray areas where but no one protests because we're like we're blowing two flags, <laughs> and then we'll have a you know case law that develops. Both well, for the missing <laughs> mark and the change course, <laughs> yeah, you need to do it for the entire fleet. Yeah. So if there is separation in the fleet, you want to make sure everybody is aware of that. Um, and then the other thing that happens you know, in spring regattas coming up, um, you know, there's going to be swimmers that step off the foredeck and uh, you know, go for a swim. So um, it's uh, and there's going to be, and, you know, laser capsized, <laughs> and FDs are going to be capsized. And so um, th there's kind of a bunch of unwritten rules about how the race committee reacts to those situations. Again, it depends <laughs> on the fleets. And, um, but the main thing is, like, let's make sure that the, all the racers are safe. Um, they're asking for assistance that, like, we get over there and provide it as quickly as possible. Um, and even Persistence. If you see a yeah. fleet going away and all of a sudden the boat peels off and the sails are flopping, you send the whaler up yeah. there and say, yeah. Yeah. what's going on? Yeah, that's that's another part of like just keeping track of all the boats on the water. Um, 
the the other kind of unwritten rule is like if they we, we also want to keep track of how many times the particular boat might have gone over and, mm -hmm. and use all this information if they've been in the water for 15 minutes or they've gone over several times like you, you should intervene because <laughs> um, a lot of people come here from Florida and first time sailing and all like this is great and they dump the boat for the fifth time and uh, and hypothermia starts to set in they're not making they're not not making good decisions so um, even if they say no no we want to keep racing like no no we're you know get get to the boat and we'll tow we'll tow your boat back to the harbor and like go get some more I don't have a bigger flag, but it's time for a break. Yeah. <laughs> How about 10 minutes? And since you've been such a wonderful audience, I brought some chocolate. Oh, yeah, the counter. <laughs> <laughs> One more thing about chocolate tends to make sure it's
I was I was told once when I was taking photos to not uh, make any of them public until all the protests were over. Yeah. <laughs> Back to the drone thing. Yeah. <laughs> you got one of these? Yep. Yeah. It's in there. So when your voice is up, just uh, the regular halyards as you go up on Well, probably goes up on top. Because there's the blue RC flag. It's yeah, that's, that's the RC flag. That's not the blue flag. Blue flag. Uh, not the pop flag. Would it replace the orange? No, the orange stays up. Stays up. The, the orange is the end of the line. The blue just station taking finishes. For instance, if the whalers take the finishes, they should have a blue flag. Interesting. But, well, if the whalers take the finishes, it's probably short of course, so they have the S flag, and that right. takes the place of it. But right there, Homer. Okay, let's start to that. Uh, like I say, I just learned about it on preparing for this course. So. All right, yeah. Is the RC flag a substitute for that? I mean, no. No? No, they're different. So yeah. they're different. I have never been protested. That was one of the things we got in this, at the race, at this race management course is, try, is like really paying attention and trying to minimize the number of flags. They actually like recommended like if you finish all the boats that kind of followed you out to the starting area, take the race team flag down um, to, as a way to like make sure that like you've only got the most important signals up there and you're not you know blocking the flags. They leave the race flag up. Yeah. 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 Listen, they want to leave the flags. Great. Uh, and then after after all the finishes, uh, yep. we got inside to pick up all the toys, uh, and uh, it's it's really important to record the docking time, um, you know, in the log of everything that you're taking down. The docking time is what um, starts the protest filing period. <laughs> uh, um, so like we got an hour uh, after the the dock uh, to get your protest in. Um, and then do all the scoring. Um, Just most, get John to do it and you don't have to worry about the thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, most, of, most of the scoring is in the data network. You know, like it might be worthwhile to like, uh, have a session <laughs> on you know, those who know we got a network to share, share a bunch of information there. Um, and it's it's it like unless you've got some kind of like previous commitment and you told the rest of the race committee that like you gotta get away, it's good to like stick around, help out to get all of the jobs done. Um, um, kind of makes it go smoother for everybody. Um, and then have a little debrief, you know, talk about you know things went well that day. We're there. Um, and uh, you know, things things that you could improve on or you know Equipment that like would be good to have on the boat uh, for for the next race. Uh, the other thing I didn't mention at the at the uh, the first of the day, like write your name down on the onward as like you helped out on the race committee. Um, that's the way that you get the little race committee hats. <laughs> <laughs> not only that, not only that, that, you get invited to the committee dinner. <laughs> That's a great yeah, point. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Ah, it's good to yeah, know. Yes, I like those hats. <laughs> uh, if you, uh, you know, you might be called to, uh, or the you know the race committee members might be called to you know protest, uh, be witnesses, things like that. So kind of hang around for that if you can. Um, and then make sure you hand out all the prices and support the bar. <laughs> I had a question about uh, the minutia of, uh, of Onward. I, uh, I noticed that the rear uh, canvas doesn't always come off. And I don't know if that's a question for, for Matthew instead that's of this. That's a question for Matthew. You can answer it. Okay. If some people your, forget it, that's why. What's your question? question? It should come off. It comes, it comes off. Off. Come off. If we're a racer, should we call it Onward? Hey, take the thing off does the back of the boat. Does it matter? <laughs> does it matter? Because I'm the one that has to re-varnish it. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm guilty of not taking it off because I don't see it. Got yeah. it. I'm happy to take it off. The other thing that's really important is once you finish and you come off onward and you come off the whaler is you don't talk to anybody about what you saw on the race course or didn't see if you see any flags up. 
Because believe me, they're going to try and get information out of you before they go to that protest room. Yeah. Has, has that ever happened to you, Barb? <laughs> <laughs> Is it, can, uh, if race committee doesn't go to protests, do they? No. Race committee can be protested. They no, can be protested. Right. They, 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 they can also be called yeah. as yeah. witnesses. Yeah. Any, any, anybody who observes yeah. uh, either protester. But not on a cro protest committee. No. Yeah. Not race committee. It's um, generally a bad idea if it's just a small club, small event. Sometimes it happens. It's a bad idea. You want a separate independent protest committee that was not out on the water. Yeah, that was another thing that, like, there was hours and hours of, of this race management set, uh, seminar to talk about the organizing authority is the, like a separate entity, and they assign the race committee and also the protest committee. And, like, they, they're for big regattas, you want independence in all of these different uh, groups as part of the race. Uh, you want the race management just to be done by the race committee, and you want it to be a separate entity itself because people can protest the race committee, and then like you've got a conflict of interest there. Uh, you know what I'd say about that? If you protest the race committee, you got the job. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a time. Yeah. yeah, on these large national or international and so forth. Which you might get a t-shirt for. <laughs> <laughs> are, are we supplying all people who do all this, or do any of those people bring people in? Um, do they, support? they have brought in international judges and international um, qualified race committee and PROs, which are paid positions. Um, but I think most of the, the manpower is, is local. That's my memory of the yeah, yeah, this world. So I, I lost count after pulling 18 marks one day. <laughs> so what would you say are the minimum requirements for somebody who wanted to, to volunteer? Do they need to know all their flag no. colors? No. no. What, what, so what do we need? One should not be sensitive to seasickness. <laughs> um, need to be a team player, be able to focus. Um, the individual jobs are complicated. But you need to be able to work as a team, take take directions. So it's easy enough. I can do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I said, like the, the the kind of the simple jobs are the recorder. Like you just people are going to tell you stuff, and you write it down. Um, they should have good handwriting. <laughs> yeah, some good handwriting for that job. Uh, you know, three arms for the signaler. You got three arms. You know, sign up for that job. Um, uh, but that's where, like, there's a little bit of training up front, so, you know, that's, we kind of all, it, it mostly happens kind of informally, but, like, having this good list of jobs, and, like, that's what, this, that's what this book kind of gives you some background on each one of those jobs, and if you, if you know the job, you kind of know what the responsibilities are, then it's mostly, um, when you get out on the race course, it's just mostly coordination. And there's also, you know, there's people around that to kind of help you through. Uh, and like you say, we've always got the postponed flag or the abandoned flag there as they're backing up. Make a mistake, there's no problem. Like we'll just go again. And I strongly suggest that you move around different positions to see how the whole thing works because it really increases your knowledge and you understand what's, what's really important and what is not so important. I think uh, the most important thing is that race committee is a lot of fun. You can be out there and see whales, <laughs> dolphins, all kinds right. of wildlife going out there. It's actually, a uh, uh, red flag wire. It's not really represented, but you can go There's enough room on Onward that and, you know, if we've got five or six people and like you just want to go out and how everything goes and you want to have a great day out on the bay and sit in the sun and watch whales, like you don't have to do anything. You can just go along for the ride first right. time until you kind of see what happens, and then you know there's usually two or three starts during the day, and you like you know, you're watch out and you know sub in for somebody on one of the jobs. Take up your fingers. And you know that all five people. Yeah, so it's not, yeah, it's that's not I think like Fred mentioned like what are, the, what are the what are the things that you get out of it? Like if you're a racer, like you get like reading through the rule book. From the perspective of like the rules that apply to the race committee, 
like gives you a whole new perspective on you know the responsibilities that they have and the duties that they have and how they're operating. And like you take that knowledge to the race course and you can you know you can anticipate like what the race committees you know potentially might do. You, you really know all the signals that they're putting up. Like you give some inexperienced people on your boat, like here's all these flags going up. Well, like what do all these mean? Like and if you have to spend some time to like you know do those jobs and like understand which which what flags are going up. Uh, can really give you like a different perspective on racing as well. You might want to check out my leaning against the clothing deal there. That's my cheat sheet. Um, look at both sides of it, but it's got all the flags, all the signals, the sequence. And if I had that up here, I would have answered all the questions correctly. Who's <laughs> <laughs> that? Ah, some of my props and procedures. Rule book, very important. I've got tabs. Oh, wow. <laughs> 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 I had to take two open tests with this. Are you an attorney? Are you an attorney? No, I'm not. <laughs> wow. you, you could be. <laughs> <laughs> That's scary. <laughs> <laughs> or promising. <laughs> I set my watch to onward clock, and I have a clip to my clipboard, especially if I'm a recorder, so I don't have to listen to anything. I can look at my watch. I can copy the time down without looking up. You never know what you're going to need to lash down. I go out the bungees, little bits of lash. Um, here's an example of my work right here. Blue tape is great. Doesn't leave any residue. No, Much better than duct tape. Not duct tape. Huh? No. Duct tape. My wind indicator, pretty high tech. Double as a pencil. <laughs> but this and the hand bearing compass, you can go wind direction. Yes, but look at all the stuff they got last night for onward. Yeah. yeah. What'd you get? You're gonna be out late. Better bring some kind of light. <laughs> I like to go sailing with a headlamp because you just never know and sometimes it's good to have two hands. I have a particular uh, problem with people that use high tech line to tie their whistle around their neck. <laughs> this is a breakaway lanyard. If I hook it on something, I lose my whistle. Big deal. I bring my own GPS. I've got the waypoints in here. Spare batteries. What's that? Very, very important for a blondie. Phone screen. <laughs> <laughs> Wire ties again. You just never know when you're going to be lashing something down. A hat's a really good idea because you're out there for 10. Oh, I always wear a hat. Yeah. I don't think I'm bald with the sun. Yeah. <laughs> and then up here, if you're interested, this is the check-in sheet that I made up for last year's score race. This is my finish sheet. These are some of the flag decals. This is my cheat sheet. This is a great decal that came from Australia, but they're not importing them anymore now. <laughs> and that's it. We have yeah. some questions. Then, um, yeah, one, one, one more thing is like, do bring your rule book if you can print it that. Is, like, and it's not really important to know all the rules. Just get really familiar with the index so that you can know where to find it. Know where to find it. You know, there's a couple hundred pages there. It's all, it's all legalese. So there's a lot of room for interpretation, like knowing where to find stuff. My point was the most, most, most important thing is recording times and votes. <laughs> yeah. 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 And, and did, did you see my blue tape? Did yeah. you see my blue tape under the clock? What do you think yeah. of that? Recording time. As That's far good. as the finishing. Yeah. Yeah. Save, yeah. save, save. And this, this idea of you know, just, just having a log, I think, is, is, you know, that's a good best practice as well. Just kind of keep track of, because some cases, like you've got boats that are finishing, they're not even in the same class. Like if you've got to like rifle through three or four different class you don't, pages, you, don't you just just put in, put, record everything. Like just have a running log of everything that happened on the race. You've got that log, you can, you can use it to sort out all kinds of problems. First of all,
Technology moves on, and Gene tells me we're installing a $7,000 chart plotter and on yeah, 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 yeah. Whoa. which will do everything, including make coffee. <laughs> but That's maybe amazing. we'll keep track of all the boats on the race course. Yes. Too. Yeah. yeah. Will it measure a shortened course? Because that's a pain in the ass. Could be. <laughs> and the other thing is, don't take instructions very well. And you're not a team player. Hmm. There are O positions open. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and Mr. Homer here, how long have you been midwinters? Five years. So it's and three would you months. like to do it five more? No. <laughs> how long have you done score? I've done score two years. How long would you like to do it more? <laughs> He's doing it this year. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but the point is, right there's, there's openings available. There's openings available up the ladder. Yeah. So that you go out there and have fun with these guys and learn how they do it. And then take over. Last year in Beater Cup, uh -huh. <laughs> Don was on the boat. We were sailing for the cup against Monterey. I happened to be on the committee boat with what's considered some of the hot shots around. And we were over early. And we didn't come back. And the flag stayed up and the flag stayed up. And Don sailed by at the end of the race. And basically, you know, I didn't hear a horn. So the whole boat is scrambling because nobody knew that you had to have a horn up when you put the individual recall flag up. They look at the rule book, they find out that just what, we needed the horn, but then they tried to say, oh, it was too late for Don to ask for a redress because that two minute time frame was up. Well, luckily they put the flag for a redress up anyway and Monterey decided the right thing to do was to call that race off. So that rule book, here you've got all these hot shots on the boat that should have known the rules, should have had a horn up, and didn't. So, I mean, that was a serious thing that happened, and it just shows you that you need to look, and everybody makes mistakes. Right. So basically it's what the, the one time you have to use the horn is the Yes, recall. it's an individual recall. Great job, you guys. Thank you. Thank you.